Hey guys, it's CJ and we are back for another episode review for Love After Lockup slash Life After Lockup. And today we'll be talking about season three, episode 29, and they titled this week's episode, Good News and Bad News, and for good reason. But before we get started, make sure that you like this video and also make sure that you subscribe to my channel. I would really, really appreciate it. But with that being out of the way, we'll go ahead and get started with this week's episode. Now, I guess I'll just go, as always, in the order of who I thought was most interesting to least interesting. And I thought that the most interesting story this week was actually Quaylen and Chevelle. Even though we all kind of get tired of seeing Quaylen and Chevelle, um, I don't really, just because the it's hilarious to see the foolishness that the two of them go through. But anyway, D-Mark is still mad that Quaylen popped up and that Chevelle was all happy about it. Um, Chevelle asked D-Mark to watch Baby Girl while she and Quaylen go away to talk. He reluctantly obliges. He goes to do it. And long story short, Chevelle and Quaylen are on the Ferris wheel to talk. And basically, Quaylen just wants to... He wants her to know that he has learned his lesson. He's ready to come home. He's ready for them to be a family again. And Chevelle just kind of wants to know where he sees them because we all knew that Chevelle wanted to be wife, wifed up when Quaylen got out of prison. But Quaylen claimed that he wasn't ready for that at the time. But now all of a sudden he apparently is because he gets down on one knee with the ring and he proposes to Chevelle. Chevelle says yes, of course. And, you know, he does this really like half-assed proposal that he probably could have kept, but Chevelle was all crying and she was just so excited. She was just so happy and oh, yes, yes. And it was showing all her gums and she was just like crying, like for real crying. I think that was like a real scene. She's laying on him in the Ferris wheel, got her head all on his chest and he looked uncomfortable I don't know if he wasn't re expecting that reaction or if he just really did not want to do this but he did it just to kind of shut her up and to be able to come home but she was happy nonetheless and now you know he's just kind of like what does D Mark have to say about that and it's kind of weird they got this strange relationship to me it seems like the both of them are like vying for Chevelle in some way I know she and D-Mark are cousins but it just seems like he just refuses to let her be a grown woman and live her life he wants to tell her what to do when it comes to Quaylen and Quaylen really doesn't want D-Mark in the picture he doesn't really seem to care but I think that from what Quaylen has done to Chevelle naturally the family is not feeling him but that was their story. So then I'll get a quick story out of the way. Scott and Lindsay, one of the craziest couples on this season. Um, Scott basically felt dumb for falling in love with what he calls a hardened criminal. Lindsay, she's back in prison and she violated parole. She claims that she was test driving a vehicle, but the vehicle she was test driving mysteriously had drugs in it. She got pulled over and they found the drugs in the car. She's back in prison. He knew that she would go back to prison as he has told us in episodes past that he knew that she wasn't going to stay out. Um, and she didn't. She basically apologizes to Miley Grace and says that when she gets out, things are going to be different this time. And she regrets meeting Scott. Scott can now move on with his life. And side note, Scott's lip looked a lot better this episode it was a lot less swollen so maybe he is sticking to the diet because I knew that he had like some sort of preservative um sensitivity or something or allergic reaction to preservatives and he wasn't supposed to eat them I guess but it looks like he's sticking to his diet he looks a little better kept um his haircut was decent he's still not attractive at all but 
there's somebody for everybody. So some tells me that that's not the last that we'll be seeing of Scott, but it does seem to be the end of Scott and Lindsay. And next, who will we talk about? Let's talk about John and Christiana. Um, John goes to see his homeboy, the one that I believe he was the guy that um, married Christiana and John. And he basically tells him that sis-in-law has been pushing up on him and he hasn't really been refusing her advances. The friend thinks that John needs to cool it. He needs to chill out when it comes to that because he's playing with fire and he doesn't want to go down that road. And he just kind of, John says that I guess it came from the playfulness. Like they would find themselves being playful. He would take her phone and they would just kind of play. And those kind of things just kind of cause, you know, the flirtiness just kind of caused them to develop some sort of feeling. They've never acted on him from what he says, but he knows that it's not right. And he knows that he needs to put an end to it before something before it goes too far or before Christiana gets out of jail. Um, which brings up the fact that Christiana calls him at some point and tells him that she is getting out of jail in two days, as a matter of fact, but a condition upon her being released, she, she doesn't have to go to the halfway house, which is great because she never, ever seems to successfully complete you know parole or anything she can't even get out of the halfway house because she relapses and she runs away and she gets locked up again but she can come home to john's but she cannot be around anybody with any kind of pending charges so that means that sis has to go and john has to tell her john's kind of excited about this because he knew that she wasn't going to be able to be around when Christiana got out, but now it doesn't have to be at the hand of him saying, you know, because we got feelings for one another, he can basically just now use the excuse that Christiana can't be around anybody with any pending charges. And so that is why he, well, that's the reason that he's going to use to get her out of the house. So he calls her outside, um, her and mom are out there and he tells her, Hey, Got some good news and some bad news, hence the title of the episode. He tells him the good news is Christiana is getting out and she's getting out in two days. So mom is excited. Sis is fake excited because she's really pissed because she probably had intentions on acting with John, you know, acting upon something with John beforehand, but her plan is not gonna work or her feelings, you know, she might as well forget it. The bad news is Christiana can't be around anybody with any pending charges, so you gotta go. So the sister is like, what? You know, she is just blown away, can't believe it. Mom's crying, they get all upset, her and mom are holding hands again. And sis believes that he's lying and she believes that he just doesn't want her around and Christiana around at the same time. John is feeling relief because now he feels like, okay, I don't have to tell Christiana about the sister or at least not yet but sis has in her mind that christiana needs to know that there is something going on with me and john she she can't explain what it is but she knows that there's something there and she's going to tell christiana about it or at least plans to so we will see how that unfolds then we had you know lamar and andrea andrea and Lamar and Priscilla, they're going to see Shantae, who is Lamar's first child. So Andrea, you know, is basically just saying, you know, she's going to try and remain Christ-like and she expects Shantae to, to do the same. And you can already tell, it seems like Andrea is coming with a chip on her shoulder. Like she is coming and she is ready for beef. She's ready for war. She's ready for whatever. Even Priscilla has to ask her mom, can she be nice? You know, cause they know how Andrea is and they know Andrea can turn up at the drop of a dime, but they come in and they see the family. Shantae's there with her children. You know, Andrea just kind of moves past when they come through the door and she hugs her dad. And they actually, you know, Lamar talks about shattering his daughter's vision of what life would have been like 
you know, what, what life was supposed to be like with him coming out of prison. And he shattered that, you know, with his new family because she felt like once he came out, he belonged, you know, to Andrea and Andrea's family. And he put her on the back burner and she wasn't included in any of this. And that really did hurt her. And they all agree that Shantae and Andrea, they do need to get to know one another. Lamar excuses himself from the conversation. He lets the ladies talk. They sit down and they have a really adult conversation. And I do have to say that I was very proud of Andrea because she handled herself the way that, you know, a stepmother should. She was calm. She was understanding and she did acknowledge how things might have appeared. But she did, you know, let Shantae know that she does want them to be a family. Um, and she wants to be, you know, a grandmother to her, her children. She wants to spoil them like any grandmother does. And she does want that relationship with them. Shantae feels like she hasn't been included, you know, in that family unit that they've created. And I really do think that from what we saw in this episode, that they are going to make a conscious effort to actually bring Shantae into the fold as the daughter and they're going to work on all being a family together but I thought that was really cute who are we going to talk about now let's talk about Lacey and Shane you know Shane we see him he's changing locks on the doors and Lacey's like why he's just like you know so that nobody can come in i.e. John he don't want John being able to come in because I'm sure John had the code to the last lock when she put Shane out to be with him. But Shane <laughs> said that he will bust John's face off. Those were his words. John is still pressed that Lacey is not answering his calls. He's mad because normally by now, Lacey would have come back. They would have, you know, got it in by now. They would have at least talked or whatever. But she is paying him dust at the moment and he goes to see her friend Miranda, the same girl that Lacey went out to eat with a few episodes ago because he just has to know. He needs the tea on the night he went to jail. He's, uh, you know, convinced that Lacey got him locked up, that Lacey was the one who called the cops and got him put in jail. She tells him, honestly, I don't know. She has never said that. And that she always, this is Miranda, of course. Miranda, you know, she wasn't sure if Lacey called the police or not. But she always pictured it being John in Lacey's life that he would have been, you know, her baby daddy and everything. And she tells him that Shane and Lacey are expecting. And John gets all in his feelings because he does, he said that, you know, she was pregnant with his child at one time. She had a miscarriage and we remember when she thought that one of her existing children was his, but turned out not to be. And he's still determined he needs this closure that he's just so diligently seeking and he wants it from Lacey. So he's still going to try and talk to her. Now we go to Marcelino and Brittany. They decided last week that mom needs to go to Alaska. She needs to face her demons. She needs to get this closure and maybe from there she will want to heal. She will want to get clean. She will want to get sober or whatnot. So mom doesn't want to go at all. They're taking her to Alaska. They're flying the whole family to Alaska. I don't really know how expensive those plane tickets were, but I could imagine that it cost a good grip. So Marcelino must be tearing it up on the poker tables in Vegas, but they get to Anchorage and Brittany is ready to go see grandma. I guess it's the next morning. She is ready to get right down to business. She's ready to go see grandma because they're going to do like a tour. I guess she wants to start with grandma. She wants to go and see her dad and anybody else who may have triggered her mom to start using or whatever because she knows that she needs to heal if she wants to remain in their life. So they go see grandma. Grandma is happy to see the baby. She's happy to see everybody. And when she sees Cindy, she just starts bawling and crying. And 
it's an emotional reunion for the two of them. And after listening to them talk, we do find out that there is a history in this family of substance abuse, alcohol abuse, um, generations. Um, Brittany's grandma, apparently her great grandma like so there have been like generations or great grandparents i should say of drug use and it explains a lot about the cycle that continues down the line but it seems like Brittany wants to break that cycle it seems like it started with her and her sisters you know they wanted to be different and so their family so on and so forth will be different and grandma seems to be a lot like cindy she didn't really take much responsibility for what happened i never heard her say i'm sorry that my lifestyle caused you to be abused and it caused you to run away it caused you to become an addict it caused you you know to live the life that you live now mom didn't take it grandma i should say did not take any responsibility for that she basically said i didn't put the pipe to your mouth i didn't make you smoke anything so it's not on me but that honestly y'all and just truthfully speaking i do kind of feel like we can do without Brittany and marcelino's story all together um britney seems to really be a happy ending in herself just based off of her her story alone not including her mom or anything Brittany got out Brittany was determined she was gonna do the right thing there was never you know even with her friends even with the people who she served time with in prison we could tell that Brittany was determined that she she was just done with that life she she lived it she was done she wanted something new and Marcelino offered it to her and they have a beautiful family and a beautiful life together. But honestly, I think that they had a happily ever after in terms of the show and they honestly could have could have moved on. But anyway, I think that that's it. I think that I've talked about everybody. Let me make sure um, again, not an extremely eventful episode it was what it was but anyway we can talk about it in the comments below let me know if there's anything that i left out anything that y'all want to talk about y'all know i'm always down to talk i do try to respond to i do respond to everybody i don't get enough comments not to but uh if you've watched thus far i appreciate you taking the time to watch my video again i've got other videos on my channel so please feel free to go and watch them like them comment and again, always subscribe to my channel. But anyway, this is CJ and I will probably see you all in the Bell Collective. And I'll do that one tomorrow along with um, Love and Marriage Huntsville. So I hope everybody has a fantastic weekend and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.